Hey-ho! How about a pet peeve to start the weekend? Will it be a positive? Dina Banks has the answer. P.O. Positive or pet peeve? Jack, I've had this pet peeve for years. We've got a beautiful lake and a nice boulevard, but why don't we have one of those coin-operated binoculars? answer. Dad telling me, Meredith, the picnic area is for the older kids. Hello there. Hey, how are you? I may have mail for you. Is it addressed to Mickey or June? Or both? Uh, to both. Here you go. Savior in the hour of darkness. Never mind him. He's a bit stressed out. We were a bit low on paper. Nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Meredith. Nice to meet you, too. Woo! What kind of paper? Probably a bit of cash and some rolling paper. Ah, that kind of paper. No harm in that. Amen, sister. Thanks for the delivery. You're welcome. So, are you guys on vacation? Sort of. Although, I guess you need a job for a vacation. Joan! 
Can you get in here, please? Now? Oh, that's my cue. It was nice meeting you, sweet Meredith. Can you, like, not tell the authorities your whole life story? Did you watch The Love Bug? Hey, Miss W. Yes, I did, and I guess I liked it. 
You don't have to hide it from me, Lori. You can say you loved it. I guess it wasn't bad. It was really fun, actually. See? Ancient isn't all bad. You still ready for Sunday? I have never been more ready. It's going to be rad. Yeah, totally tubular, right? Uh, sure, Miss W. Uh, see you Sunday. Here's the mail. Thanks, Meredith. And, uh, sorry for leaving all of a sudden yesterday. Yeah, what was that all about? Well, it was just... I needed some space. I think I've gotten a bit too used to being on my own. Was I such bad company? No, no, not at all. I, I really enjoyed it. I just don't want you to feel weird about it. I was the weirdo. Right. Okay. I just wanted you to know that. Anyways, let's see what's in the mail. The dentist appointment. Wait, why am I sharing that with you? So, no news regarding those apartments? Nothing. Hallelujah. This gives me a bit more peace of mind to work on my wild card plan. Wild card plan? Wild card plan. Yes. Also, highly confidential. Okay. Good luck with that. Thanks.
Hi, Angie. Oh, hey. So, hey, I dropped off and picked up those movies. Right, right. Is everything okay? You don't seem your usual peppy self. You don't know me, Meredith, okay? This can be a stressful job. Oh, easy there. I just did you a favor, remember? Yeah, uh, actually, now's not a great time. There's two more movies on the counter. If you could deliver those, that'd be peachy. Hmm. Jaws and the Dirty Dozen. You know what? I've changed my mind. I'm not doing it anymore. Fine. It was a stupid idea anyway. Now, if you'll excuse me. Bye. these folks order. All right, I'll leave it on the doorstep. the last of them.
it's me, Kay. <laughs> wow, I just like instantly dialed your parents' number. Superpowers! <laughs> Probably just muscle memory or something like that, right? Or maybe it's like that thing where you smell something and it instantly triggers this mega old memory you didn't even know you had. Know what I mean? Oh man, I had that once when Barry bought me lilacs and the smell instantly mentally teleported me to when I was like six years old and fell out of a tree. And I ended up with all this lilac smelling tree gunk all over my face. You remember that, right? What if it's like that with old phone numbers? You go, must dial M, and then your brain just triggers your fingers to dial? Man. Anyway, I uh, didn't call about that, obviously. I was thinking of maybe taking a stroll around the lake this Sunday, clear my head, and then Maureen suggested maybe you'd like to tag along. Not that I'm asking because of Maureen, of course. Just thought it might be fun to check out the old hangouts and the lake sites and all. If you do want to join, I'll be at the watchtower overlooking the lake at 11 a.m. Sunday. I'll probably hang around a bit, so I'll see you when I see you. Sunday morning watchtower. Be there or be square. The Countess and the Carpenter? <laughs> really, Mom? Oh, well, let's give it a read. The Countess and the Carpenter. Chapter 1. A more disastrous entry to her new home was scarcely imaginable for Cecilia Shulton Brow. The left wheel of her carriage collapsed right as she entered through the gates of the magnificent Raubenstaben estate. She tumbled upside down, hurt her head, and worse, her hat was ruined. Suddenly, she heard the deep, strong voice of a young man. Are you all right, madam? Should I just come up? Come on up! You just have to watch your step on the third leg. Should be good. I have to what? On, on the what now? It's fine. Cross my heart and hope to die. Scout's honor. there not knowing what could go wrong, right? Hi there. Good to see you. <laughs> so glad you made it. Isn't it nice up here? <sighs> Brings back memories, doesn't it? Any memory in particular you're thinking of? Those times we took some pie up from the diner after school and sat here talking about whatever we felt like. Oh, yeah. How about that afternoon I snuck in some beers from Uncle Stan and they were really disgusting and you puked all over the rail? In fact, wasn't it kind of where you're standing right now? Oh my gosh, it totally was. Ew, oh, did you have to bring that up again? I was not counting on getting that much in touch with my younger self. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. I kind of missed having you around. I feel the same way. So, what's life been like for you since you left? Positives? 
negatives? You know, I went to university, got a job. And maybe now it's time for something different. Is it now? Providence Oak's different enough for you? Well, maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. Ooh, that sounds juicy. Is this about something or someone? I'm glad we can have these adult conversations now. Oh, there she goes with the crazy eyes. M still stands for mind your own beeswax, I see. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm backing off. What about you? Did you end up going to college? Yeah, uh, about that. I mean, I wanted to go to art school, yes, but turns out I wasn't good enough, or at least that's what they told me when I applied. So I decided to stay and do my own thing. Make music, perform and stuff, you know. I picked up some shifts at the diner, Barry and I reconnected, got married, and then Max came along. You haven't met him yet, have you? He turns 13 in a few months. Time flies. Anyway, having Max gave things a different rhythm, but I still continued with my music. Even managed to get a bit of a buzz going in Portland. Lined up a few interesting gigs. Tough to balance, but fun. That sounds exciting. Yeah, just like that, Uncle Stan got sick. Hit him and Aunt Mo like a ton of bricks. It was crushing. There I was, just about to get somewhere with my music, but I just couldn't let them down. So I stayed, helped out nursing Uncle Stan, picked up his shifts at the diner. Sounds like you really stepped up. Well, in hindsight, it was a lot. In the moment, though, you don't stop to think. You just do it. Where was Barry in all this? Barry was actually really great. We divided tasks back at the house, and he took care of Uncle Stan when he could. No questions asked. He was just there. And what now? Well, Mo has offered a couple of times to put my name above the door at the diner. Up until now, it felt like too much too soon. Too definitive. But, I don't know. Maybe if she asks again, I'll think about it. The way things ended up, it may not have been part of my master plan. But I got to spend some of the most precious moments of my life with the most precious people I know. Got to say goodbye to Uncle Stan and be there for Mo. He basically raised me. I'm grateful I got to do that for them. And I built a family of my own right here in good old P.O. And one day, those kids will hurl all over this rail, just like we did. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's been tough. But looking back, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. Oh, that's so great, Kay. I'm glad at least one of us grew up to be a well-rounded individual. Is there a manual I can borrow? Well, after you left, I had to raise myself, didn't I? <sighs> so, ready to descend to the world below? Nah, I think I'll stick around. Enjoy the view some more. <laughs> the view from the top of the ivory tower. Be careful not to get too used to it, young lady. Hmm, okay. Thanks for the invite. I'm glad I came by. Just... Try to cut down the word count on the answering machine next time, would you? Oh, you better buy yourself some new tapes for your machine, Weiss. Just kidding. <laughs> you know how I get when I get nervous. Thanks for joining, Em. This was... good.
Hello? You're speaking to Monster Deal Central. How may I help you? Hey, Steve. You're in a good mood? Meredith, please tell me to calm down. We are so close to a deal. Add it 87 in shops all across America. M -m 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 monster deal. Oh, wow. That is so awesome. Tell me more. Okay, okay. I met up with this big retailer, right? They read our great pitch. They loved it, and they want to buy 250,000 copies of Added 87. 250,000. Multiply that by, like, 35 bucks. What? That's millions of dollars of revenue! M-m-m-millions! And, and it's just the start. Listen, I've got the contract right here. I'm sending over a copy. You should have it tomorrow. Please, please, check, check, double check, check it right away. I want your blessings before I sign on the dotted line, okay? Gotcha, Steve. Don't worry about it. Awesome! I'll be in touch again Tuesday evening. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. It's official. I love horror movies. A Nightmare on Elm Street is radical. It was amazing! Thank you for watching with me, Miss W. You're welcome. I'm never going to sleep again. Ha! Huh, maybe you shouldn't have watched the movie. Man, I wish my parents would let me watch these movies. I can't wait until I move out. Yeah, oh well. I hope you had fun. Yeah, I did. Maybe it's about time I convince my parents that I'm old enough. I'm almost an adult, and I don't want to wait until I've moved out until I can watch another horror movie. Don't worry. We can always do this again sometime. Yeah, I had fun. I hope you did too. For sure. Maybe we can visit Angie's store and find a new movie to watch. Oh, uh, yeah, totally. Good night, Miss W. Oh, Steve's parcel. And another note from Tess. Hey, Em, here are Steve's contracts. I bet you're in the mood for some light reading. And now without sarcasm, really, I must admit the energy here is contagious. Is Adit actually going to take off? See you soon. Tess. Good morning, Miss Weiss. Uh, good morning, sir. I didn't see you there. The name's Walter Morgan. I'm with the Postal Service. I left you a message on your answering machine earlier this week. Ah, yes, I remember. Miss Weiss, if you could follow me into the office, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Are you familiar with the Postal Service policies? To be honest, no. It says in Chapter 11, Section 3, First Paragraph, and I'll paraphrase, it is forbidden to use Postal Service property for personal gain. Oh. Okay, sounds reasonable. Miss Weiss, I'm aware that you've only just begun working here, but I trust that you do not take the responsibilities of a postal worker lightly. No, of course. I mean, uh, yes, sir. The Postal Service puts its employees under the highest level of scrutiny. I advise you to answer the following three questions truthfully. A yes or no will suffice. Do you know Frank Coleman? Nope. Frank Coleman told me he personally gave you a job introduction, and that you see and talk to him almost every other day. Oh, wait. F yes, F 
Frank, of course. Have you ever given him envelopes or received envelopes from him that weren't postmarked? Yes. Are you aware that Frank Coleman wages bets on baseball games? No. That will be all. Thank you for your cooperation. What's going to happen to Frank? I'm sorry. We can't discuss personnel matters. Good luck with the mail today, Miss Weiss.